Today on Special Edition TV, a revolutionary new HVAC system that helps the environment and your bottom line. Welcome to Special Edition TV. I'm Eliana Bravo. Energy and the environment have certainly been in the news lately, especially with issues like pollution and global warming. Solving our energy challenges while maintaining environmental responsibility is a hotly debated issue. Ah, the refreshing sound of a pop bottle opening. And on a hot day, the fizz of the bubbles sure makes it taste even better. Now, the same stuff that gives soda its fizz may also help to keep it cold as well. In fact, it may help to cool and heat our homes, buildings, and even make us hot water, all in an environmentally friendly way. And what's this magic element? It's atmospheric carbon dioxide, also known as CO2. Yes, the same CO2 that has dominated environmental news lately. Surprised? Conventional refrigerants uh, have been around for some time. Actually, CO2 uh, saw some widespread use uh, actually a uh, hundred years ago as a very early natural refrigerant, uh, but lost popularity when some of the new synthetic refrigerants came out. Travis Horton is an associate professor of civil engineering here at Purdue University. He's been working on improving the energy efficiency of buildings. CO2 is increasing in popularity again, primarily because it is a very uh, environmentally friendly refrigerant. It's non-toxic, uh, it's non-flammable, uh, and it, it does have a very low global warming potential. In fact, it is the refrigerant, the baseline refrigerant, against which all other refrigerants are compared for their global warming potential. Uh, so it's a great opportunity to have a positive impact uh, on the environment. In fact, according to a report from the Royal Institute of Technology in Sweden and posted on the EPA's website, CO2 is relatively inexpensive and unique among natural refrigerants in its good safety characteristics. Additionally, the report says all these factors combined make it an ideal fluid from safety and environmental points of view. While the technology and science has been around for quite some time, making it viable and efficient in today's high-tech HVAC systems has posed a challenge. Hence, a joint project between Purdue University's Herrick Labs, one of the world's most advanced labs for testing HVAC compressors, and Ecothermics Corporation, a private sector HVAC technology company. We've been involved in working with Purdue University for about eight years now. Merrill Roki is the CEO of Ecothermics Corporation. They've been developing CO2 technology in an effort to not only make HVAC systems more energy efficient and to save money for end users, but also because government regulators are poised to require the HVAC industry to reduce their carbon footprint. Most of the leadership in the HVAC industry anticipates an ongoing series of legislation to keep reducing the global warming potential of refrigerants. And we believe that as more and more people realize that a natural refrigerant, CO2, is as good or better than any HFC refrigerant that will hasten that, uh, that change to CO2 as the refrigerant. Meanwhile, though, we aren't waiting for climate change legislation to drive that change. We're relying on our energy efficiency in the initial applications to, to drive the change. This small compressor simultaneously is expanding and contracting CO2. So when it compresses it, it gets very hot, so you can heat air or water with that. And at the same time, in other parts of the cycle, it's expanding or cooling the CO2 so you can have cooler water or cooler air simultaneously. The applications globally are almost endless. Uh, certainly we think of residential applications but commercial buildings uh, such as restaurants and hotels and office buildings, industrial processes, mobile equipment, actually on board mobile equipment, uh, as well as portable solutions for uh, heating and cooling, such as for the Army or for uh, FEMA, uh, as, as in a post-Katrina situation. Uh, it's it's uh, possible to use this technology uh, on the power grid or off the power grid, even driven hydraulically, uh, anywhere in the world. However, the first place that Ecothermics technology is being put to the test is here. This is Stolpak, and their business is dependent on this little guy, the honeybee. 
This is a honey processing plant in rural Ohio. The honey usually arrives in drums as a semi-solid. The American consumer wants a honey product that is liquid, it's clear, and uh, we're going to take it through a heat exchanger, elevate the temperature so we can take it through a filter press to remove any foreign material, and we'll pull it back through a heat exchanger to cool it back down to not damage the product, and we're going into holding tanks for packaging. So the demand for heat may vary somewhat during the time of the year where the product is coming from, but there is always significant demand. We've uh, paid for a lot of propane and fuel oil through my lifetime. It's wonderful to not being able to have to use that or use less of it, um, to just not have to worry about those types of issues. Well, for the end user, especially with energy costs on the rise, uh, the ability to reduce your energy consumption uh, by a factor of three to four uh, translates very nicely into a, a reduction in your overall expenditures for energy. Another factor that makes CO2 an environmentally friendly refrigerant, as opposed to today's current synthetic refrigerants, is safety. Typically, if we're dealing with, with regulated refrigerants, we have to have trained uh, or EPA certified personnel to maintain the systems. Since CO2, CO2 would not be a regulated refrigerant, uh, one of the benefits is that you would not have to have on staff a trained EPA uh, certified personnel to take care of that. In the event of a, of a leak uh, as well, CO2 is, is very nice from the standpoint that it is not toxic and it's not flammable, which many of the other, in fact most of the other natural refrigerants uh, suffer from either one or both of those aspects. The heart of the ecothermic system is in their compressor design. This allows all of the existing ductwork in an installation to stay put and only necessitates that the compressor and surrounding support equipment be changed in the case of a retrofit. Now, one of the issues that has plagued the HVAC industry is equipment failure, especially the compressor. The compressor we've developed is uh, considerably different from the traditional rotary or, or recip or scroll compressor designs that are used in the HVAC industry today. Different primarily because of the high pressures required by CO2. To get the energy efficiency from CO2, it has to be elevated to the transcritical state, which means about four times the pressures of a conventional refrigerant. So we figured out how to do that and have a robust compressor that's still durable and doesn't have lubrication issues at those high pressures. We estimate that a typical system will last at least 20 years. This is real stimulus. This is what I continue to talk about uh, on the national platform is, you know, it's not going to be government spending and government programs uh, that is going to lead to long-term economic growth. It's going to be private sector entrepreneurs who take risk, who make investment, uh, who come up with a better technology, uh, better innovation. That is what has always allowed our country to compete internationally. And I think Ecothermics uh, and what we're talking about here today is an excellent example of that. Certainly our goals are continuous improvement. We'll never be finished. We continually improve the performance of the compressor in terms of overall isentropic efficiency, for example, and the durability, and keep reducing the cost. And so uh, we'll, we'll have the Mark IV and, and beyond as we look at two-stage compression and uh, energy recovery in a variety of ways to keep improving the performance and reduce the cost. For Special Edition TV, I'm Richard Allen reporting. Until next time for Special Edition TV, I'm Ileana Bravo. Find Ecothermics at 309-495-7320 or on the web at ecothermics.com. Find Special Edition TV at specialeditiontv.com.